Hi everyone, my name is Sona, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. Today, I wanted to take you through one of the worst NHL injuries I have ever seen, and that is Clint Malarchuk's skate to the neck. Let's review this injury in more detail. Okay, so I'm going to start off by reviewing the video footage with you. I'm just going to put a, quickly, a quick disclaimer in here that you are going to see some blood, so for those who are a little squirmish, look away. All right, so I'm going to play this footage at about 0.5 speed so that we can see it a bit easier. And Clint was playing for the Buffalo Sabres, or yeah, the Buffalo Sabres. And as you can see, the opposing team here is charging the net. And that's the moment of impact that unfortunately caused the slice to Clint's neck. Now you can see here that he had no idea what was going on. And it was only once he took off his helmet did he realize that he was squirting out blood from his neck. And that's what he reports in, in news stories after the injury happened. Let's take a look at this injury from head on. So this is the Blues essentially charging Clint, who's in goalie at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the rink. And it's going to be the Blues, a player here that is charging the net. And that is the moment of impact. And as you can see here, there's immediate squirting of the blood, and that level of squirting scares us as doctors because when we see that velocity come out, we're worried that an artery may have been nicked. It's okay to nick a vein because veins actually don't have as high of a pressure, which means they don't help, they don't cause you to bleed out as quickly. But when I'm seeing things that squirt out to that degree, I'm worried about whether or not his carotid artery was severed and whether or not he needs to get addressed ASAP. So as you can see here, Jim, the athletic trainer of the Sabres, runs to his side. And arguably, Jim, who was a former combat, combat medic in the U.S. Army, single-handedly saved Clint's life by what he did on the ice. He ran to the side, and instead of just applying pressure to the area, he put his fingers in the wound and plugged or pinched the vessel that was bleeding. So much so that Clint said he couldn't breathe at times, but Jim told him it's either this or death. So Jim was there, applied the pressure, and did not take that pressure off until Clint was off the ice and doctors were by his side. Now once Jim got him off the ice, they took him to the locker room and it was there where the team's doctors met Jim. And what they did was they applied so much pressure to the base of his neck that Clint stated in reports that he could not breathe. And the doctor would essentially ask him, do you need a breath? And he would say yes. He would undo the pressure. Clint would breathe. There'd be spurts of blood and he'd reapply the pressure. It was that bad. Now Clint was rushed to hospital where he underwent surgery. And it turned out that he lost approximately one and a half liters of blood, which was about 30% of his blood volume and required about 300 stitches to fix both the jugular vein and all the tendons and muscles that were cut going through. Now when he asked, or when the doctors came to Clint's bedside, they told him that he was extremely lucky in that his internal carotid artery was just missed. Now had that artery been nicked, he could have very well died on the ice. And we're gonna go over the anatomy and discuss why that is. So here's an overview of the human head, and you're going to see just muscles on the outset of it, as well as, uh, as, well as blood vessels. So veins are low, think about arteries and veins as, as pipes, okay? Veins are low pressure pipes that take blood from the extremities of your body to your heart. Arteries are high pressure pipes because your heart pumps them to various aspects of the body, to the head, to the feet, to the toes. So when you nick an artery, it's high pressure blood flow you're seeing. When you nick a vein, it's low pressure. So that's why in our view, when I see blood spurting like that, I am worried that that patient or that athlete has nicked an artery. Because if they have, the injury was, is that much more severe and they can lose that much more blood. Now, if you see here, Clint had the skate to the right side of the neck. His skate, the skate to mark was actually a lot higher up and that's important because of how the arteries divide. So this muscle here was likely torn just based on the anatomy that we're looking at and that's your sternocleomastoid. Now it was this vein here, 
his internal jugular vein that was severed. And it was likely severed up around here where the skate mark was. Now, if you look at this red vein or red artery here, that's your carotid artery. So it comes from your heart and this carotid artery then divides and becomes an external carotid artery and an internal carotid artery. Now, it was the internal carotid artery that was narrowly missed. Why is that so important? Because the internal carotid artery is the artery that supplies the blood flow to his brain. So had that been nicked, his brain would have not received the blood flow it needed, and he could have very well died on the ice. So overall, Clint Malarchuk is an extremely lucky man. The fact that the skate merely only severed his jugular vein and missed his internal carotid artery is one such reason why he was still able to walk off that ice. The second and the most important were the actions taken by the Buffalo Sabres athletic trainer, Jim, who came on the ice, who took his army medic knowledge, pinched off the bleeding vessel and did not let go until he was able to receive more medical care. Now, Clint's injury does bring about an important safety topic within the NHL, and that's the use of neck guards by players and goalies alike. To this day, in 2021, the NHL has not mandated the use of neck guards, but since Clint's injury, multiple goaltenders have elected to use them to protect their necks while other players are charging their nets. Now, it's not only just goaltenders that are subject to these injuries, in 2008, Zetnek, a player, had actually received a, or had a skate sever his carotid artery. And he was lucky in that his carotid artery was still somewhat attached and they were able to repair it. But that resulted in much more blood loss than Clint's injury. Now, Clint, being the NHL star that he was, had surgery and was back on the ice a mere two weeks later, playing for the Buffalo Sabres once again. As I've discussed time and time again, professional athletes will do anything to return to play. And he had surgery, he felt better, he recuperated his blood volume, and whether or not he was 100% cleared to go back, he was back in the net a few weeks later, playing for the team once again. If you like the content of this video, click the like button. If you want to see more videos in the future where I break down the anatomy and biomechanics of common injuries professional athletes face so that the average fan can better understand them, please subscribe to my channel. For now, that's all.